God has placed something in your spirit. Let, let's call it a, a coming attraction or a sneak preview. And the reason you cannot stop thinking about starring in a movie, you cannot stop thinking about building a nonprofit, you cannot stop thinking about writing a best selling novel or nonfiction book. It's because it's a trailer that God has placed in your mind and in your heart. But dig this. What Hollywood producer would spend thousands of dollars to make a trailer for a movie that would never come out? Uh, I'm gonna share some information with you that I wish I had known. Not when I was 20 or 30. I wish I had really fully understood this when I was in my 50s. And in a nutshell, what I'm about to share with you, uh, it's what separates the good from the great. It's what separates the good from the great. There is an amazing book with that title called From Good to Great. It says, good is the enemy of great. And that is one of the key reasons why we have so few that become great. We don't have great schools because principally because we have good schools. We don't have great government principally because we have good government. Few people attain great lives in large part because it's so easy to, it's just so easy to settle for good lives. Now, let me say, I love this book once again, and I've lived by this principle for many years, but those words are not a exactly true in and of themselves. And what I mean by that is that the author could have gone a lot deeper if he had the information I'm going to share with you today. In fact, when you fully understand what I'm about to share with you today, you'll understand what Michael Jordan has in common with that 600 pound woman there. You'll understand what both of them have in common with Warren Buffett, considered to be the best, the greatest investor the world has ever seen. And you'll understand what the three of them have in common with Martin Luther King. You see, Michael Jordan played, when Michael Jordan played back in the 90s, and if you remember in this game, he hit six three-pointers in a row. Six three-pointers in a row. And then after he did it, um, Magic Johnson, who he had been, as he mentioned in the documentary, he was, uh, I think he was playing cards with the night before. Magic Johnson was at the announcer's table announcing the game. And that look he's looking at, he's looking at Magic saying, dude, I don't know what's happening. It's just going in. Well, <laughs> when announcers see that this is happening to an athlete, what they typically say is what? He's in the zone. He's in the zone. Well, by the time we're finished, what I want you to understand is not only what they refer to as the zone is, but I also want you to understand how you can get into the zone. The Bible says, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Everything is possible for one who believes. Because there is a force out there that is dedicated to making you believe that it's impossible, mm. that those things are past, those things are over, that you might as well give up. Nobody in your family did that. Who do you know earned that? How can you have this in your life? And this, the job of this enemy is to see itself in your subconscious, which we're gonna talk about later and to continuously remind you that it's impossible, that it's impossible. But when you start to speak those things that, uh, that are, as, th as though they are, things start to happen in the earth realm. So when you find yourself feeling fear or doubt or, or feeling that you've hit a wall in your life, just say those words to yourself. It's possible. It's not deep, it's not Greek, it's not Hebrew, it's not very, even very profound. 
<laughs> but just remind yourself that it's possible. Now, and once you start doing that, you will notice that the doubt will decrease. You will notice that things start to lighten up in your life. Because see, if the enemy can make you believe that it's impossible, he can make you accept that your life is less than God has in store for you. Amen. Let me say that again. If the enemy can make you think that it's impossible, he can make you accept the fact or believe that, li that life is less than God has in store for you. The story is told about a man who had bought a new house. He had dreamed of this house. He saved his money to buy this new house. And then once he bought the house, he discovered, he discovered that he needed to go to the store to buy some new supplies to hang pictures. So while he was getting ready, when he was getting ready to get up to get to go out and buy some new supplies to hang up more pictures in the house, an amazing thing happened. The lights went off in the house. He decided that he wanted to find his keys to go to the store. So he, when the lights went off, he couldn't find his keys. So he was searching and searching and searching, trying to find those keys. Suddenly, he had this brainstorm. There was lights outside the house. So what did this genius do? He went outside to start looking for his keys because there's more light outside. So he, he's looking and he's looking for his keys outside the house because there was no light inside the house. Well, sooner or later, a friend walked up, one of his new neighbors and said, what's going on? And he said, I can't find my keys. So the guy says, okay, well, let me help you find them. So together they started looking and looking for the keys. And then the guy said, well, where's the last place you had the keys? And he said, I had them in the house, but the lights are off in the house. So I decided to look outside the house. Now, <laughs> I know that sounds stupid. I know that sounds crazy. I know that sounds absolutely positively insane. But are we much different? Isn't it amazing how we, men who are intelligent, many times can look outside ourselves for answers instead of looking inside ourselves to find out what God would have us to do. Many times we are looking outside of ourselves for answers. If the enemy can make you search outside, he can keep you distracted from finding the real key, the real answer to your problems. If the enemy can make you look outside, you will never discover how you can get out of the financial bind you're in. If he can make you look outside, then he can stop you from getting the help that you deserve. So focus on what's going on inside. The key to a better marriage is inside. The key to tripling your income to, to, to writing that bestseller, to starting that ministry, to starting that business idea, all of those things are inside of you. And, and the fact that you do not readily see how it should be done or how it can be done, I should say, is irrelevant. But the key to doing those things are inside. So today I'm going to give you three things that if you fully understand and unlock, will unlock the greatness inside of you. It, um, last Saturday, I went to see this great movie called The Woman King. Great movie. I highly about you going out and looking at watching. But before seeing it, I watched the trailer. The trailer was good. The trailer was very good. But the trailer could not compare to the movie. The trailer, was, the trailer was only produced to announce the coming of the movie. God has placed something in your spirit. Let, let, let's call it a, a coming attraction or a sneak preview. And the reason you cannot stop thinking about starring in a movie, you cannot stop thinking about building a nonprofit, you cannot stop thinking about writing a best-selling novel or non-fiction book. You cannot stop thinking about starting a family, adopting a child, you name it. 
It's because it's a trailer that God has placed in your mind and in your heart. But dig this. What Hollywood producer would spend thousands of dollars to make a trailer for a movie that would never come out? <laughs> Why would God give you a trailer if there was not the possibility of a movie, of something great being birthed? of something amazing being done in the earth realm. You see, the trailer is the proof that there is something within you that's bigger than you. The trailer is the proof that there's something in you that's far bigger than you, a vision so big that if you, if you finish, if you saw the finished product before it's time, that, that, that it will scare you to death. And that's, you see, there's a, an uh, old African proverb that says, if there is no enemy within, the enemy outside can do you no harm. If there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do you no harm. In other words, there is nothing you cannot do if you assess all God has placed within you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm about to preach that one sometime. There is nothing you cannot do if you access all that God has placed in you if, you, if you utilize the gifts and talents that God has already given you. And let me just say this, my, my biggest enemy is the inner me, the inner me. And, and let me take it one step further. When you complain, when you whine, when you moan, when you grumble, when you, woe is me, can I tell you what you're doing? You're doing two things. First of all, you're praising the devil. You're giving him the benefit. You're bringing his name up in conversation. All the power that he has over your family. All the power he has over your health, over your business. You're giving him the credit. And secondly, you're killing the gift that God has placed within you. You're praising the enemy and at the same time killing the gift mm -hmm. with the words that's coming out of your mouth. And, and that ties directly into our topic for the day. When you complain, when those words come from your mouth, mouth, they're coming from the body. It enters the soul and it affects your spirit. It comes from the body, it enters your soul, and it affects your spirit. Understanding what I'm about to share with you can literally make you like Jordan in game one. You, you're unstoppable. You know, one thing I remember Jordan saying, he said, when my game is on, I don't care how good you are, you're at my mercy. What he's talking about, even though I don't think he fully understood it, is he was able to tap into what we're going to talk about today. That's how he was able to take himself to another level where he was totally unstoppable. People who understand what, what we're going to talk about today are able to excel in business to the next level, to excel in finance, to excel in education to the next level. My dear brother, Kobe. Um, Kobe was also one of those people who could tap into that thing. Uh, Kobe had a unique way of training in the off season. He referred to it as his 666 workouts. Obviously, I'm not crazy about the name, but this is what Kobe would do. He said he would work out six days a week, six hours a day, six months a year. Six days a week, six hours a day, six months a year. This six-hour routine is divided into two hours of basketball skills, two hours of weight training, two hours of track work. In fact, Kobe said he, when, if he got a teammate, and if he had to fight with the teammate to get them into the gym, he didn't want to play with them. If I got to fight with you to get you in the gym, we can't even roll. He said, I want a guy who I have to fight with to get out the gym. Why was why did he have the, the mamba mentality as he would he would uh trademark it? It was something bigger than him, bigger than him inside of him. This is important for you to catch. The, the more he worked the body, 
it will go into the soul and it would enter his spirit. So today we're going to talk about the soul, the, the spirit, the soul and the body, the spirit, the soul and the body. If you read 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it reads, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God, your whole spirit and your soul and your body be preserved, blameless, until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are made up of three entities, a body, soul, and a spirit. The body is the aspect of us we see in the mirror. That's the part of us that we want to need to go to the gym. That's the part of us that we put, women put makeup on, we get the haircut. That's the body, okay? The soul is the middle aspect of us. It's the, the aspect of us that we refer to sometimes as our personality. Sometimes it's referred to as the mind. It's also referred to us as our will. It's the seed of our emotions. And, and sometimes we refer to it as our consciousness. That's the, the conscious man. Your, your spirit, I look at your spirit as being like your modem. <laughs> it's the part of you that receives messages from God. It's the part of you that God drops and in things into. I want you to do X, Y, Z. And you felt that in your spirit. Okay? It's your transport. It's, things, it's how you speak to God. We can only come to God, as the Bible says, in spirit. And in truth, we, we must communicate with God spiritually. It's not coming from your soul. It's not coming from the body. But it comes to us. It comes to us. Uh, it goes to God from our spirit. And that connection with him is divine because the soul, the spirit and the soul are what goes to heaven. The body is remains here. That's why when, when the Bible says that man judges the outer appearance, <laughs> but God is judging the heart. The heart is also a euphemism for the word, your, your spirit, your spirit, okay? Now, now let me go just a little bit deeper into this. We, we showed this slide earlier. Uh, those three, those four people all have something in common, okay? Information entered their entered inside their entered their body. It felt good to the soul, and they and they, and it resided in their spirit. Now, as I was saying, it might not have felt good initially to the soul. The soul might have even rejected it. Many times, when people do drugs, initially it don't taste good or feel good, or they don't even like it. The, the soul immediately rejected it but through repetition which i'm gonna talk about later on repetition what which is what kobe did shooting all those shots repetition which i'm sure jordan would tell you he did over and over again with repetition the soul accepted it it felt good i'm also sure that if you were to go back to kobe i'm sure that the first time he did that 666 uh workout that it didn't feel good to his soul i'm sure that it was time that he may have, first time he did, he might have threw up. He might have vomited. This I can't, man. I don't know if I can do this every day. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, this man, this is too hard. Maybe, maybe I do it three times a week. Maybe I do it. Initially, the soul might, may have rejected it. But the crazy thing about the soul is this. If you do it enough, the soul will learn to fall in love with it. To the point where I would flat guarantee you there was time when those six months was over, he thought, maybe I should go in one more day. Maybe I'm gonna do it one, two more days. I'm just gonna do it one more week. I'm just gonna, because the soul had transported that emotion, that feeling, that rush of adrenaline. It transported that into the spirit. That's the small thing that makes a big difference in your life. So going back to my boy, Michael Jordan, and I brought this up earlier. Why did he shrug his shoulders? It's because something inside of him didn't fully understand what was going on inside of, outside of him. He, he knew hard work worked 
paid off. He understood that intimately by this point in his career. But things were working so well for him, he's looked at magic and say, dude, I can't explain. As a performer, as an athlete, as a businessman, this is when you call yourself being in the zone. When you've moved from the body, you're no longer operating in the soul, but you've entered the realm of the spiritual. And then there are times when people who, who sit at the press conferences, athletes like Michael Jordan or, 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 or Allen Iverson or Magic, and they'll sit there and they're just shaking their head. And one thing they usually say about basketball, they'll say, you know, the hoop looked like it was three feet wide. Everything I threw up just fell in. It's because they've moved from the body, they've entered the soul, and it's resided in their spirit. Let me go back to our very first slide, our earlier slide here, uh, and talk about this diagram a little bit. The consciousness is inside the soul, but the subconsciousness resides in the spirit. The subconsciousness resides in the spirit. It's what moves you when you don't realize you're even being moved. It's the part of you that controls you that you may or may not be able to understand yourself. Why? Because it's in your subconsciousness. You see, all of these people do things that they cannot at times fully understand. That's why Dr. King said in this one of his documentaries, he, he was talk, being interviewed and he said he never wrote down the words, I have a dream. Those words were never written down. He made one of the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest speech of all times. But he never wrote down the words, I have a dream. But they were planted in his subconscious by Mahalia Jackson. And he said that as he was speaking, and you listen to this speech sometime, listen to the people in the background, you will hear this woman's voice. As he's wrapping it up, she says, tell him about the dream, Mark. Tell him about the dream. And then from that little spark, it sprung out of his out of his subconsciousness and he spoke words that shook the world but let's look at it from the opposite side of the spectrum see the large woman in the slide do you think that she's happy in any way with her life do you think she's happy being I, I, I don't know maybe 30 years old 35 years old and being in a wheelchair this young lady may have had an active life when she was young. Who knows? Somebody might have done something to her. Who knows what caused her to get in the situation she is in physically. But something buried, something jumped into her spirit. Initially, she may or may not have enjoyed it. it the food could have been a substitute for love, for, for masking the hurt, the pain. But it moved from the soul into her spirit into her subconsciousness. Now she cannot even control herself. The same thing happens for a prostitute. The same thing happens to a drug addict. They don't choose to sit there, oh my God, let me go do crack. It controls them. The same thing happens for a man who will not work, just won't work. People call him lazy, staying with his mom at 35, I don't care. Because something is in his subconsciousness that's controlling him and making him do what, it, what he does. And that brings me back to the power of repetition. The more you hear things with your body, the more you see things with your, with your eyes, your body, the more things you feel within your body, the more it will make its way to your soul. Repetition. Initially, like I said about COVID, maybe you don't even like the feeling initially. You might not like getting high. You might not like the doing the thing that, it, that you're doing. But eventually, it will get itself inside your soul. Now, let me say this. You can choose to do drugs if it's in your conscious mind. You can just stop smoking weed. You can choose to do things if it stays in your conscious mind. An athlete can turn it up and practice for a week, go out and have an amazing game. I know I did it before, you know, it's, and then, but the next week I couldn't find me. <laughs> you, can, you, you can have, you can have money. You can want to be a millionaire and save, 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 and invest, 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 and, 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 and become a millionaire. You can do that. 
But what separates the good from the great? The good from the great. One has success in his soul and the other has success in his spirit. When you are good, talking about from good to great, when you are good, there's something within you that you could turn on and off. But when you are great, there's something within you that is bigger than you, that will not let you sleep until it's birthed through you. It, it has to, you don't have a choice. You will find yourself up at three o'clock, four o'clock in the night, working on your vision, on your mission, on your passion. You see, the battlefield is in for, is for your soul. Why is that? Because if it, if it gets into your soul, it can change your life. If it gets into your subconscious, it's a wrap. And another name for your subconscious, which is your spirit, is also your heart, your heart, your heart. That's why the Bible says, Jesus says in the Bible, for out of the heart comes evil, thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. Those things don't come from the body. They come from the heart. They come from the heart. And if you hear something over and over and over again, it can lodge itself in your heart. January the 6th, people who were well-intentioned just may have had an ideological different opinion of things than I, I do, but were not evil people in any way. Doctors, lawyers, pastors, priests, I'm sure, all came together in January the 6th. But they had heard something over and over and over again. And they found themselves beating police officers and climbing walls. Why? Because something that was said was repeated and repeated and repeated until it found its way into their heart. So when you see these things happen, evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander, it comes out of the heart. It's lodged itself in the heart. Over the past 48 hours, over the past 48 hours, you've been hearing about coach, Boston Celtics coach, Emmy Uduka. Um, he and Neil Long have been together since 2011. They have a son together. They have a combined net worth of a, around $18 million. Uh, that would put them definitely in the top one half of one percent in the in the world they can live anywhere they want to they can eat anything they want to they can vacation anywhere they want to they can drive anything they choose to from what we both from what we know both of them are in the best of health yet the coach was suspended by the boston Celtics for having an affair with someone in the organization and, and i'm sure if you asked him if you just came and asked him he would give you an excuse but eventually, it'll get down to, I don't know. I don't know. You kept asking, but why? But why? But why? Eventually, my dear brother would just shrug his shoulders and tell you, I don't know. Well, let me raise my hand. I know. Jesus already told us. From out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft. False testimony, slander. These things are not from the body. They are not even from the soul. But they plant themselves in the heart. So how can you change your life? It's simple. You become what you continually hear. N not listen to, but what you continually hear. What you continually see and what you continually feel. Because it will eventually move past your soul Find itself into your your find itself into your spirit or your heart. The Bible says, "He who is wise wins souls. He who wins souls is wise." I'm sorry. He who wins souls are wise. And I want to open the floor up and ask this question. This was spoken by Solomon. He who wins souls is wise. Why do you think he would say that? That he who wins souls is wise. 
the floor is open. I would say, I would say, because if you're winning souls, people are following you. People are wanting to do what you're doing or want to learn what you're doing and see how to do better. But I think that's our whole thing is we're always wanting to do better in our in our life career, our family, with everything we do. We want to do better and achieve better goals. Powerful. Powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to chime in? He who wins souls as minds. Well, we can go back to the scripture that everyone I'm sure on this call knows is John 3 16 where the Bible reads for God so loved so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life and when we underscore so loved that meant God was willing to do something because of love to save a wretch like us all Mm. sent his son Christ Jesus to die on the cross and the whole journey of Jesus was about sacrifice um, was about salvation was about redemption was about saving the souls of mankind and was about re reconciling us back to the father and he was always about his father's business as the Bible so eloquently states so I think when he, when you read Proverbs and it reads that he who wins the souls is wise, um, you are aligning yourself with the actual purpose and mission of Jesus Christ. And what better mission to align yourself with other than his? My God, my God, my drop moment. Thank you for both of those perspectives. And in conjunction with that, look where we are today. We are, you, your bodies, your bodies are here on a Saturday morning when you could be out playing golf or or sleeping in or having brunch with your your significant other. You could be doing something else with your body. But we have Mary Bourne. We won your body. You're here with us this morning. We have won the spirit. How do we how do I won the spirit? You're at least paying attention to us. You came to hear a word from God or to understand how to better yourself. So the spirit is in line. The body is in line, but keeping your attention and winning your soul, that is the hard part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Engaging you, making you, giving you something that you can take from here, planting something that's inside of you. That is the hard part. It, it takes wisdom to do those things. It takes more than just winning the body and the spirit. Mm -hmm. you, it takes more, you can get saved in 10 seconds. <laughs> you can get saved in 10 seconds Just repeat the Lord's prayer But it can take a lifetime To be fully and truly converted Amen Do anyone have any questions About the topics today Anybody have any questions About how you can change your life By understanding the power of the body The soul and the spirit Pastor Tim If I can throw this out here This is just for, for my own learning as well too um i don't know it all so um i submit myself to all the men here and allowing the holy spirit to teach us all but my question and i hope this doesn't uh move us away from the the, the focus of the actual topic but um you mentioned the word conversion right and mm -hmm. so my my question is why do we think or believe that it takes so long for some of us as believers to convert because mm. in the natural sense we have something in life called gravity um what goes up must come down it's a natural law in the earth realm okay uh everything that goes up in this earth must come down um we also have sin in a spiritual sense the pool of sin on the flesh is undeniable. The fact that you say the Lord's Prayer do not excuse you from a world that you live in, the world of sin. So it's going to pull on you until the day of redemption, until you go to heaven, and when that will not be an option anymore. You will feel the urge. You will feel the How do I know? Even Jesus felt the pull on him. For the Bible says he was tempted of all things. So if he was not tempted, then we would say, well, the law of, of sin did not, not 
affect Jesus because he was never even tempted. Yeah, he was tempted too. So if he was tempted, if he had, if he had to pray, if he was tempted, then surely each one of us is going to be tempted as well. With that being said, thank you so very much for that question. I got another question for you. Is there, is, next question is, is there anything you had to repeat until it got into your soul? Anything that you can attest to that the power of repetition that you did so much that it became a part of you? Hey, what's up, Tim? Hey. Sam? Yeah, go right yeah, ahead, so Sam. You, so real quick, you know, I've always been positive, but uh -huh. you know, in the first 10 years when you get married, you know, you go through a whole bunch of bunch of trials and tribulations. And so um, my main thing was, I guess, in terms of income, being, you know, in my 40s, my late 40s, you know, I was making maybe around forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. And I knew I could do better. And so a lot of the companies I would go in and I work, I was more or less like a game changer. And so mm -hmm. I come in and basically re, re, redo the business unit and make it more profitable than what it ever was. But as you know, in corporate, they don't they don't award you on that, um, right per se. And so I took it upon myself. I was like, all right, I'm not doing it for them; I'm doing it for me. And so as a result of that, um, within like four years, I had an opportunity. I was first, they, they, they promised me that they were going to um, fast track me into management. I wound up becoming a whistleblower, wound up doing a trace on their, on their business practices and stuff like that. And I realized there was huge gaps and they were trying to point that on me. And I was like, no, nah. I said, you, you got, your paperwork is all messed up. So right. as a result of that, they wind, winded up um, firing one of the people because he was basically stealing from the company. And it was millions of dollars that we were talking about. So you would think that I would have gotten promoted. It didn't happen. Wow. I wound up getting a 3% wow. raise. 3% raise that one year. Second year, it dropped down to two. And then the first one was like 0. 0.6. So I was like, all right, I got I to gotta make a move. I got to pivot. So I knew what I was doing. It, I was consistent. And it was repetitious. And I had perfected my, um, my craft. So as a result of going out on faith, I wound up doubling my income to 90, like 95,000. Uh -huh. Did that for about three months. And then the guy was like, no, nah, we want to bring you on board. We're going to offer you what's it going to take. So he's like, All right, I'll give you another 10. And then I haven't looked back since then. So it's, it's consistency. <laughs> it's just like with, uh, it's consistency. Just like with Kobe and, and, and Shaq, you, you got to believe in yourself. And you got to have identity. You got to know yourself. And you're going to know that because you're you're spiritual. And so, you know, you got to read the Bible for yourself because a lot a lot of times some of these pastors, you know, they, they, they missed the message. And now they're kind of going back and saying, hey, we were wrong about this and that. But, you know, a lot of people, you know, they walked away unless they went and they, they read it for themselves. And that's that's my two cents. You know, you said a mouthful there because when you have... When you do something over and over and over again, you start see success. You start see success. And what the enemy wants to do is bring failure to you. So, so when you are a Kobe, when you are a MJ, when you are a whoever fill in the blank, when you into the two seconds left in the game, or when you're making those phone calls, or whatever, you'll start getting glimpses of success. You start seeing the ball go through the hoop. You start seeing the person saying, yeah, I want to buy. You start seeing success right before your eyes, right before you make the phone calls. That's why repetition is very important. That's Thank you so much for sharing that, Brother Sam. Brother Derek, you back? Yes, yes, Tim, I'm back. Go right ahead, my brother. How has, have you done anything that you repeated over and over again until it got into your soul and eventually your spirit? That's a simple one for me. Um, <laughs> I thought it would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the, the gym. The gym. I was a um a skinny kid. Mm. Uh, I was around one thirty five at eighteen years old. Whoa! Yes. And one and, of your um, arms is that much now. <laughs> <laughs> right, and um, mm. oh my god! And I used to. I always say that I, I watched a lot of anime and comic books. And okay. I wanted to learn discipline. So my brother, 
who happened to um he had started wrestling in high school so he used to come home and practice on me all right now my brother was bigger older and he used to beat me and okay i, I hated losing so i decided that i was going to start working out so i could match his strength but what happened once i hit the gym i noticed it wasn't just like my body changing my confidence the way i saw stuff right just going day in and day out where you know when you first start working out it's interesting when you look at people they lift in like huge huge heavy weights and it's is is intimidating mm-hmm. but i think i think the gym this is a personal perspective i think the gym is the closest the closest in terms of um building people up to the church yeah yeah right right to the church because i think it's the one place that everybody that goes no matter how they look or shape their end their aim is to be better wow and so good analogy i i'm i'm seeing these guys strong big huge and i'm just like okay i i i'm i'm going to get here i don't know how yet right because in the beginning you really not sure how it's even possible right but I remember my first 6 months in the gym. My body changed. Right? Like my body, I put on like 20 pounds of muscle and my walk changed a little bit. You know, the confidence your chest is poking out a little bit more. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And some of the kids, some of the guys that used to come in there, you know, they start they start saying little things like, "Hey, hey, hey big man, get out the way." I'm like, <laughs> "Big man?" <laughs> like when that become big man? But Through the years, the consistency of the gym has shaped and informed every other single part of my life. From from, it's been over 20 years now. From the consistency and the daily routines, I've utilized that. Whenever I don't have knowledge about something, I literally create the same program, right? So if I want to learn a new skill set, I literally order five books on the skill. I was spent the next three months just researching and reading nothing but something to that skill set, and I've noticed that every six months when I come out of it, I have a new skill set. I may not be an expert, right, but I know enough that I could I could talk to somebody who's an expert at it, and they don't see me as an imposter, right? Right. So the daily routine has shown me that you can learn anything if you give yourself time and consistency. and actually put in the work or go into the place. So I think for me just the gym has been the biggest change and the daily work has changed the impact of my life. Wow, that is so powerful. That is how you put yourself in the zone and you remember the first thing he said, he said he used to watch anime. He used to watch these cartoon characters in his case or or bodybuilders who had what he was looking for so i would assume that his father or or neighbors or whatever did not have that physique that he was looking for so he went outside of himself to find that thing that he wanted to mimic to pull it into his world and he also mentioned consistency doing it over and over and over again and we've been talking about sports but as he said he transferred it into the rest of his life he's been a very he would never tell you this cuz he's very humble but he's been a very successful businessman doing business on a couple of continents um that's because he used those same principles to put himself in that zone that I was talking about Michael Jordan using i'm going to cut off right now thank you so very much i don't want to go over on our time thank you to every one of you for joining us for the reason i'm going to cut off right now is because we must always yield to the spirit our dear brother joe's mother is in the hospital and i know she's had some health challenges but brother uh joe we're going to say a prayer for you your family as well as your mother at this time. Here's about hearts of humble eyes to close with you go before our Lord and Savior in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today thanking you for all that you've done in the last 90 minutes. Dear God, you are good God. You are great God. You are merciful God in all your ways. And we pray, dear God, that the meditation of our heart, that the things that's come outside of our heart today will plant itself inside the soul of the men who are watching today. dear God who are listening 
all over this country, dear God. And we pray, dear Father, that those words gravitate into their spirit, dear Father. Make them better men in their households. Make them better men in their communities. Make them, dear God, men reborn to their families and to their friends and, and in the body of Christ, dear God. If anybody under the sound of my voice is not saved, do not let the sun leave the sky before they come to someone and say, what must I do to be saved? Because you're a good God. You're a great God. You're a mighty God in all your ways. And we adore you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. But you're also a healer, dear God. My God, you're a healer, dear God. As the, as, as the song says, if you've done it before, you can do it again. The same God right now is the same God back then. The Bible is replete of stories of healing, how you heal a leper how you heal a woman who was unclean how you heal a man many men with blind eyes dear god so if you've done it before dear god we're asking you to walk through the halls of that hospital where my dear brother joe is right now open the door of that room walk inside and put your healing hands of mercy and grace on his mother even now let her feel your power dear god from the crown of her head to the very soles of her feet dear god move in an amazing way in her life dear god let the cells in her body be rejuvenated let the blood run through in her body dear god warmly dear god and let her feel your presence even now dear god and give strength to my dear brother joe Dear God, I know he's been traveling. So give him strength, dear God, as he holds up her hand, as he comfort her, being the son he should be in this moment for her, dear God. And when this is done, dear Father, let him come back for a testimony of your goodness, of your greatness, of your mercifulness in this day, in this hour, in this season. For you are our God, you are our King, and you are our deliverer. In your Son Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Brother John, our president, the floor is your. Hey, stop, thank you so very much for watching that video. I am so honored that you will spend some time with us here at Grace Addicts. So if you were blessed, touched, or edified in any way whatsoever, drop a comment below so that others might see how you was touched by the content you just watched. Also, if you were moved in any way whatsoever, do me a favor. Would you please subscribe, share, and like this video? It helps us to grow this ministry so that others might be blessed as well. When you subscribe, click the alert button. It'll sound something like this. I love that sound. When new content is available. Listen, I love you. God love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, yeah. If you like that video, check this one out right here. Or check this one out right here. Thank you so very much for visiting us here on Grace Addicts, where our motto is very simple. We want to make it easy for men and women to follow Christ. Be blessed. I love you.